about one of our colleagues, John Sterling. At about 4.50 this afternoon, Bob, the Yankees sent out a press release that John Sterling is retiring. He has called his last Yankees game. He has called a total of 5,420 regular season Yankees games, 211. And Michael, I imagine, I know you spoke with him this weekend, but still a little bit of a shock to hear the news. It was a shock when I got the phone call on Saturday. He left me a message and I called him back. And he said, uh, Michael, I just want you to know I've called my last game. And I said, why? Yeah, now, he's been feeling under the weather. That's why he missed the last series uh, in New York. Uh, I said, why don't you just wait until you feel better and then make your decision? He goes, no, no, it has nothing to do with the fact I'm feeling under the weather. It's just time. I'm tired. I don't like having to go to the ballpark. I love calling the games, but going to the ballpark and, tr and going home, I just like being in my, my apartment. I like watching the games on TV. And uh, he said that it was time, and then he reminded me, you know, Michael, on July 4th, I'm going to be 86. So uh, he, he said all good things come to an end, and it's kind of a sad day because uh, he's part of the Yankee firmament. His voice is certainly going to be missed. The Yankees are going to honor him on Saturday. And, Michael, I'll ask you the same thing I asked Susan Waldman on the BP show. What do you think the crowd reaction is going to be like for John Sterling on Saturday? I think it'll be over the top great. I mean, they love him. I mean, you know, it, it might, he might not have to, at times been a critical darling, but to, to be honest, Yankee fans loved him. I've been out with him. People come up to him all the time. They do all of his home run calls. He is beloved by the Yankee faithful. And and uh, I think he's going to get a huge ovation, as he should. 36 years in the booth is a long time. And until a couple of years ago, he never missed an inning. So I think he's going to get a lot of love. Now, you worked with him in the radio bro broadcast booth for the first time in 1992. What were some of your first impressions of John Sterling? It was, uh, you know, it was it was a wild ride because, you know, John always said, there's nothing that you can't say on the air. I'll follow you. There's nothing that I can't say that should throw you. You know, he had, he had been at other partners that said, I don't like when you don't talk about anything other than baseball but John is like entertaining while he's doing the game as well so you always had to be on your toes and I think that that helped me a lot that was many years ago and uh, a lot of hair ago as well but, <laughs> there it is a lot of good times too I'm sure Michael both on the field and off the field with John Sterling I, I, I love the guy he, he was great to me he's always been great to me and uh, that's why it was an emotional phone call that we had on Saturday because if you listen to him Meredith he doesn't sound like he's 85 he has defied father time when it comes to his voice, and he's just amazing. He still sounds sharp. If you listen to the last game he did, the grand slam by Giancarlo Stanton, still right there, has a great rhythm. He's a great broadcaster, so uh, I tried to talk him out of it, as I said, but he would have none of it. It is remarkable. As soon as that first pitch is thrown, he is dialed in, yeah. and he is on it. You mentioned the home run calls. Do you have a favorite home run call of his over the years? Well, probably the first one, because I was sitting there next to him in the radio booth and he, Bernie Williams had a big home run and all of a sudden he go burn baby burn and I looked at him and then you know people started like shouting that back at him and Bernie liked it as well and the fact that people started shouting it back it became a cottage industry he signed baseballs with different calls on it so that's probably my favorite because it was the first Aaron Boone said he would go back and listen to the calls because he'd always want to know what John Sterling would say when they got a new player and they had had a big moment. Would you also go back and listen to some of the calls? Well, it's funny because in the last couple of years with the advent of social media, the minute there was a new player and they hit a home run, it was on social media exactly what he said. So when I would drive home from the ballpark, I would listen to the postgame show on the radio and they would, they would I, I would hear obviously all the replays. So I, I'd get to hear it then. What should the people at home know about John as a broadcaster that they may not know? You know, a lot of people look at him and, and one of the criticisms of people I have he's a homer well I'd like to know anybody that works for a team that doesn't want to see the team win he was highly critical of the Yankees when they didn't play well when the manager made moves that he didn't like and I, I would suggest Meredith that if you go back and if, if you do this on YouTube and you listen to the ninth inning 
the bottom of the ninth inning, game seven in 2001, when Luis Gonzalez got that hit for the Diamondbacks. That was called the way you would call it if you were a national broadcaster, the same excitement, the same enthusiasm. So yes, he desperately wanted the Yankees to win, but he would call a game right down the middle. He wasn't one of these broadcasters that would be, you know, just not giving any kind of a, a good call to a home run for another team. So I just think he's an extraordinary broadcaster, great voice, great rhythm, and once the game started, he was on. What are you going to miss most about seeing him on a daily basis in that radio booth? Just his quirkiness and things he would say, and you know he would come into the television booth at Yankee Stadium all the time. And just before we were, you know, going to take the open, and he'd go, "How you doing, my boy?" And uh, I'll, I'll just miss seeing him every day. But we were, you know, one of the last things that we said to each other on Saturday, uh, you know, we're, we're going to continue to talk all the time, John. And I said, John, we'll talk forever. I said to somebody a short while ago, it wasn't opening day. It did not feel like baseball season was starting until John Sterling walked in to our booth and said hello to everybody and you heard that booming voice again. It's going to be odd not hearing that voice on a daily basis.